When I seek you with all my heart, I know I will find you, Lord. Yes, I will. The more I find you, the more I find you, Lord. The more I love you, 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 Lord. The more I seek you, the more I find you, Lord. The more I find you, I know, Lord, the more I love you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight. What a blessing we have to come into your presence today. We are so grateful, Lord. We are asking that your power and your spirit would bless us, especially tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Are you glad to be here tonight? Well, I'm also glad to be here. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. When I sit down and when I rise up, you understand my thoughts from afar. Man, you scrutinize my path and my lying down and are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Amen. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. Amen. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain to it. Amen. This verse or these verses are telling us that God knows everything about us. Amen. Hallelujah. Is it not exciting to know that God knows everything? Behold, Lord, you know it all. When I think, you understand my thinking, you scrutinize my path. All right, you've known, you've searched me and you've known me. You know me when I sit down and when I rise up. All right, God knows every single movement. Even on the day you are going to die, God knows the steps you will take that will help you to die on that day. Yes. Because there is nothing accidental as far as a Christian, a believer is concerned. Sitting up, rising, lying down, God knows about it. So you can relax. And know that God knows everything. Including when you sit up. And when you lie down. God knows everything. (laughs) He knows every moment of your life. That is what helps God to choose you. And to work with you. Because before God chooses anyone 
or works with you, he knows what you can do. I mean, even as human beings, when we want to work with somebody, we will find out what is the qualification of the person. And you will find out what is the experience of the person. Where have you been? What have you done? What have you not done? What have you accomplished? And nowadays we also find the temperament of the person. We want to know how the person responds to situations. How tidy the person is. How organized. We sometimes even ask, how is your room like? Between you and your husband, who is more tidy, who is neater? Between you and your wife, who is more organized? Because there is no art to tell the mind's construction in the face. There is no way to know somebody who looks so smart in church. Room, what the room is like. The room from which the person emerged. Because every rocket comes out of a fire. And then it flies into the air. So although you see it white and clean, moving, it came from a fireball. Are you listening to me? So he says, you have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. So you see that the process for God to lay his hand upon you is to know you. And so God takes his time to know you. So every one of us must endeavor to make ourselves to be known. But the more mysterious we are, the more secrets we have, the more hidden shadows of our lives we have, the less usable you are. Honestly, if you sit in front of me and, you, and I ask you, what school did you go to? And you say, it's personal. And then I ask you, what qualifications do you have? We said, it's also personal. And I ask you, I give you a test and I say, take this um, um, temperament test. And you say, I will not take that test. I only take a test of the Bible. But I cannot take a test of a temperament. I don't know that thing. Now, as I said here, I don't know you. Because everything is personal. And you don't do certain things. So we cannot know much about you. You are a mysterious figure. And therefore, I cannot, I cannot lay my hands upon you. And so God, similarly, wants us to come before him. I'm surprised that some of you are diplomatic when you pray. Your diplomacy has extended into prayer. When you are praying, you don't tell the truth even in prayer. Even in prayer, you are still pretending and coming up with various words. You must start to read Psalms and you will see how plain David was as he bared his soul. When he wanted his enemies to die, he will pray for their death clearly. Lord, kill them. Lord, let them wither. Lord, don't let anybody pass by and call them blessed. Let them be like the grass on the housetops, which withers. Stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. Save me with your right hand. Accomplish that which concerns me. If you read just uh, Psalm 138, you will see how he prays. You know, though I walk in the midst of trouble, in verse 7, he says, you will revive me. Amen. You will, give, you will stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemy. Your right hand will save me. The Lord will accomplish that which concerns me. Your loving kindness is everlasting. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Hallelujah. And you will see him praying for deliverance all the time. Even when he's not happy, he will tell God, you are forsaking us, Lord. You have not answered our prayer. Sometimes you don't know what he's saying. That's why when you read the Psalms, you don't even know 
what are you saying there? Because this, the first verse here, he says, Lord, you have searched me and known me. But by the end of the chapter, he's not sure. He says, Lord, search my heart and know me if there's any wicked way in me. At the end, the last verse, he says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any wicked way. But he starts the psalm by saying, Lord, you have searched me and you have known me. See, he's confused. You get what I'm saying? But all these are by the anointing. The confusion is caused by the anointing. He's not sure of himself anymore. Whether God has really searched him. And then perhaps he can also sense there are some bad thoughts in his mind. And so he's also praying, Oh Lord, search again. Because even whilst I was praying, I noticed certain things entering my head. <laughs> hey! So, forget about your diplomacy in the spirit. God is the only person you must never walk away from. You must come to him with how it is. Yes. Exactly what you are thinking and feeling. It is Judas who refused to pray. Because if Judas had prayed, I believe that God would have forgiven him. But he did not bother to pray or to even try to see Jesus. But he was not the only one who forsook Jesus and denied Jesus. Peter did it three times. So we don't even know whether three times of saying you don't know Jesus and swearing and once of selling him, of which he regretted and came back with the money and returned even the money. He reversed the whole transaction and brought the money back. I don't want to live with this money. So he knew he had done something wrong, but to come back and face the people to whom you have done the wrong, or to say sorry to God, you see, it also takes some humility. And that is why the prodigal son is one of the best, highest regarded characters, by me at least, in the Bible. Because of all the pastors who have left the church, gone away differently, I have rarely seen somebody who has the courage to return and say, I was wrong and I'm coming back. I hope I'm going to see one soon. But all of them, you know, they'll just have some kind of remarks. You know, we were young. Oh, you know, just like the prodigal son who said, well, I'm into agriculture these days. You know, I'm into agri. I was doing some field work. That's why I couldn't come home early. You know, this type of way of talking and summarizing things. But... People do not come and say, I was wrong, and I shall arise, and I shall go back, and I shall go to my father, and I will say, I have sinned against him. Make me a servant. Demote me, but I will be here. People don't do that. They just write letters and say, you know, when I was going, there were certain things I said, just forget about everything. What do you mean by just forget about everything? So this prodigal son, he said it, recognize it and practice it and accepted a lowered position as a result of what he had done. He just accepted it. So brothers and sisters, God knows everything. So you better stop pretending to God. At least if you pretend to, when you come to God, start speaking clearly. That's why when you are praying, sometimes you speak, pray quietly. So you can say everything that is true about yourself. Oh. Where can I go from your spirit? Verse 7. Or where can I flee from your presence? Huh? Where? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn, and if I dwell in the remotest parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will lay hold on me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night, even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. So the second thing here is, or after God knows you, is that he knows your location. Whether you are in the darkness, in the light, you make your bed in heaven or in hell, 
He knows where you are. Now, if anybody is going to work with you, you've got to know where the person is. A king, there is nothing like you don't know where he is. Everybody knows, somebody will know where President Mills is now. You can't, if, once you become appointed, you can't have a mysterious location. But where you, we don't know where you are at this time. Somebody must know where you are. And you've not understood what I'm saying. I'll say it very well for you to hear. You see, because he said, even if you are make my bed in hell, you are there. In the night, in the light, in the day, in the darkness. You know where I am. It is the same. I can see you. And so, for God to work with us, he must also know, and also human beings must also know where you are. Yes. I know some people, you don't know where they are. Where are you? I'm around. I remember the story of a certain guy who was, he moved to stay with somebody who was not his wife. And then, after people were complaining about it, then he moved to another apartment. Then he changed his number to a mobile phone. And then moved back. So that when you call him, he does not answer from there. Because he used to answer from that landline. And everybody could locate him. He said, what are you doing in that person's house at this time? So he changed to a mobile phone. So he'll be in the house with a mobile phone. So, I am there. I am in the house. But his, his flat was just below. So he said, I'm in the house. But he was just below the girlfriend's flat. You are around. You are there. I'm in the system. Which system are you in? A king's location is always known. And God has made us prince, princes, kings, and priests. Your location must be known. And God is saying that everywhere there is in this world, he is there. And you, that, this is the verse that I used to know that I can pray even when I'm in the toilet. Yes. Yeah, because I remember when we first became Christians, it's like God cannot hear <laughs> certain prayers when you are at certain places because of the smell that is in that place. <laughs> but he said, even if you make your bed in hell, he is dead. God is everywhere. There is no situation, no place that God is not there. Everywhere can be a church. Any location can be a church. Any place, God is there. You can have the presence of God everywhere. And as you go along with your work with God, you will find out sometimes the presence of God is even more at certain places than the official places that you may think. Yes. There are times that I've had services, and after the service, the presence of God in my office is more than what's in the church service. Yes, I've experienced it many times. After the service, the presence in my office is more than upstairs in the church or wherever the church is. I've been chased by people on the street who wanted a touch. And as soon as they were touched, this they, they, they fell, a group of them, not one, a group of them on the road, all of them, the presence of the Lord. I've been chased into the office by people who went under the power of God, under the desk, and under, when the pastor came in, all that he could see was some two legs coming out of the, out of the table. But the presence of God was everywhere. So if you believe God, God can be with you everywhere. Amen. God is everywhere. God is here. God is out there. 
God is in the car. God is everywhere. You must believe that God is everywhere. God sees everything. And that's why we must be afraid to sin, even when people cannot see us. Hey, there are things that people do more. We can see that we do not fear God. Anything that you are doing that you cannot pray. Eh? You cannot pray about it or pray as you are doing it. Eh? That thing is not a good thing. Because the Bible says, whatsoever you do, you do it in the name of Jesus. So you must be able to pray. And you must be afraid of God in the secret place. Amen. And I think that that is the difference between a certain type of person and the rest. It is your respect for God in hidden places. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's the, the main difference between you and the person next to you and between this person and that person is what fear you have of God where there are no people or where there is nothing public to show. As for the public where we are, everybody's going to behave well. I don't think anybody's going to misbehave in the service or anybody's going to do something. It is when we are alone or when we are with other people. That is when the difference is. If you are misbehaving in the house and being a satanic husband or a demonic wife and it is only your husband or your wife who can see and no one else can see, then you do not fear God. I was listening to uh, Sweet Melodies FM yesterday, 94.3. I just tuned in and I saw that it was was quite a powerful station. And there was a preacher on that station. He was talking about love. Love or so. I don't know if some of you listen to that station. But he was talking about love. And... He was saying that falling in love, that thing called fall, uh, uh, falling in love, the average lifespan of that thing is two years. It doesn't, la- it doesn't last more than two years on the average that I'm in love, that, that, that thing. That they say I'm in love. Average. Yeah. Where your behavior is excellent. You don't see anything bad. Everything is good and you behave excellently. Average lifespan of that thing is two years. When the two years go, the man was saying that you begin to see the bad things in the person that you were in love with. I said, you are like this. You are smelling. Your mouth is like this. Your teeth are like this. Your nose is like this. Your hair is like this. Hey! But you see, when that two years has passed, eh, that is where your fear of God comes in. Yes. That's where, the, that's where, where you know that God is there even if I make my bed over there. Far away in hell, in the darkness, in the light, God is there. That is where this fear that the psalmist had, that's where it comes in. And when people can't see me, I pray. Not when it's all like, when they can't see me. When they are not impressed, I pray. When they, people can't see me, I stay correct, upright. That's, that's all the difference between people. It's what you do privately. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So how do you behave? Oh, but people behave very well when we come to church. Smiling, angelic. You see the angelic faces. Everybody has bathed. 
But in real life, like as we've come to church since dawn, people have come to church since early morning. We are here in the night. They bath to come and impress ch- in church. They have sweated. They have wee wee. They have done everything. When they go to the house, no bathing. <laughs> because, because they are now going to make their bed in secret. And there is nobody there. And the man who is lying by you is some foolish man. So you bring all your sweaty body from the whole day. And come and lie there. That, that station. 90, what is it? 90, 94.3. Uh-huh. They, they were preaching on it. And they said that. They said that what? Uh, that thing, falling in love. It lasts for two years. It's such a beautiful thing. That's why people like it. It expires. It's like, uh, uh, what do you call it? I didn't know that they open that it expires. Shut now, then it's spot. Hey. And, and that's why people come for wedding because they are looking for that thing that, oh, is there somebody who is experiencing sir? And they are no sir, sir, and you know, falling in love, falling in love, falling in love. Huh? Nobody gets too much heaven no more. It's much harder to come by. I'm waiting in line. It's harder to come by. I'm waiting in the queue. Nobody shows what? too much love anymore. It's as high as a mountain, but harder to climb. Hey, hey. Tell us. There's a heaven up above, made of pearly gates, precious streets of gold. No more painful tears to cry. I believe we will live in love forever. Peace will always reign and never die. Cause love is such a beautiful thing. It's really nice when it's happening. Agree with me that it's nice when it's happening. So just take his hand. So just take his hand. Put your mind at ease. Will take he will take you there. Hey. If you just believe. Come on, say it. Nobody gets to much heaven no more. It's much harder to come by. I'm waiting in line. I'm waiting in line. Hey. Love anymore, it's as high as a mountain, but harder to climb. Wow, amen. Hey, it's fantastic. Hmm. So, people are looking for that love. When I heard that thing on that station, I said, Hey. Point three, ninety-four point three. <laughs> Number thirteen. Verse thirteen. <laughs> For you formed my inward parts. I think the King James says kidneys, eh? What does he say? My ribs. That has possessed my reins. Okay. You, you wove me in my mother's womb. So you are, you are, you are something that's been, what's the, what's the word? Woven. Hey. I was going to say weaving. <laughs> Woven. Weaving. God, you see, you, you, you are not just formed. It was, it's, you see, that's why when you go to shop, they'll write, they'll write handmade. Handmade in such and such. That means that more care was taken. It's not a factory product where they are making it in, ma- in mass. But you are specially handmade. Weaving. There, were, there was some weaving. 
that happened, they were weaving you with care and that's why your face is how it is. Hey! Hey! And your buttons is the way it is. And that is why your attitude is the way it is. That is why your abilities are the way they are. Uh, because it's a hand, it's a hand woven something. It's not a factory product. And when it's factory, you see that the thing that you have, somebody else has it. How many have come to church with a dress and you saw somebody else in the same shirt? Somebody else in the same dress. Uh-huh. You realize that the thing no, is being sold and people are buying it. And it happened that you bought one. So, you have special things made specially for you. And that's why all these pop stars and others all wear something strange. Because they want to be mysterious. I remember one king who wanted to be so mysterious and some tailors came to see him that they had a special dress that they could make only for him. The king was very, very happy. And they told him how much it would cost. And he paid them. So they said it's going to take them some weeks to do it. So they told the, he, they told the king that the, the, this dress is so special that only fools and people who must lose their jobs cannot see it. People who are fools and people who must lose their they cannot see the special dress that they will make. So, the tailors went to start their job. After three weeks, the king sent his assistants, his aide camps, to go to the tailor's uh, office. When they went there, they saw the tailors. And the tailors asked them as they were there. Is it nice? Do you see? Is it nice? And they, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see any cloth. They couldn't see any clothes. And then you see the tellers were there. They were doing something. So, so they look and say, ah, we cannot see anything. But they remembered. So they, were go- they went back to see the king. So when the king said, how is it like? Because I'm looking for my coro- a special day that is coming. I'm going to wear that. When they went, they remembered that there are two qualifications for seeing that. Thing. If you can't see, Mr. Number One, you are a fool. And number two, you must lose your job. So they realized that, Charlie, if we tell the king that we didn't see anything, it means that we are fools, and it means that what? We must lose our jobs. So he sent them again for second follow-up. Again, they didn't see anything. They came back, the king asked, he said, oh, it is even more beautiful than when they started. So finally, the day came and the tailors brought the clothes. So the king was there. When they came, they were all holding with their hands like this. And the king also remembered that thing that if you cannot see it, it means number one, what? You are a fool. And number two, you must lose your job. I, I'm talking about handmade. Specially made for you. Specially made. So they told the king, remove your clothes. Only uh, underpants. So he removed his clothes. He was wearing his white shorts, underpants. I, so they started saying, please lift up your hand. And the king remember, if you can't see it, means what? You are a fool. And number two, you must. So he put his hands on. Beautiful. They put it on. Then the other one. Beautiful. Then he put it on. So, oh, it's gorgeous. Then they, they called all the people around. How do you say he was standing with his pants? How do you say, oh, it's, sir, it's marvelous. Oh, sir, it's fantastic. What a beautiful, I mean, it's gold, beautiful gold. Hey. Because of something specially handmade that he wanted. So he said, how am I looking? Everybody said, no, you are looking. Because if you don't see it, it means, number one, you are a fool in the castle. And number two, you must lose your job. Hey. So the 
he went for the grand ceremony. Outside public, wearing his boxer shorts. Color, color white boxer shorts. Color white. With the front open. And he was moving. And as he was going, when the people saw, people were, huh? And the king thought, oh, it's because of my beautiful clothes. So he was going, and then people started saying, ah! So he was moving in town deep. They had reached far in the procession when a little child, a little child said, Ah, can the king not see that he's not wearing any clothes? It was then that it occurred to the king that, Hey, look at me, a fool. I'm here wearing boxer shorts. I know it wasn't even boxer shorts, it was a bikini. So, this story teaches you two lessons. The people around you who don't want to lose their jobs. Somebody should go and tell President Mills the the, the story. Who don't want to lose their jobs and who don't want to be seen as fools? They will not tell you the truth. And you must not be so desirous of having special handmade. Charlie, if others have some, it's okay. After all, you are not special. Back to the Bible. It says, you, well, you wove me in my mother's womb. Wow. Huh? I will give thanks to you. Why? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. And my soul knows it very well. You are specially handmade. And what will you do because you are special? I will give thanks to the Lord. You see, when God has made you special, you must give glory to him. God does not like people who don't give him glory. Amen. God does not like people who attribute things to themselves when he specially made you. Do you understand? And you must use your talent for God. Yes. As I've been watching Michael Jackson and use his talent, the guy could sing and the guy could dance. Yes. But you ask yourself, what can you do? And as I watch him die, and go out of this world. I just ask the Lord, whatever I can do with my life, you know, how I'm made, I would like to use it to give thanks to the Lord. You see, there is a certain giving of glory to God with how you are. How, what are you? What hast thou that thou didst not receive? Which family did you come from? Which home did you come from? What color is your skin? What are you like? How are you made? It's it's a special handmade product. You are not a mass production. And that's why it's it's everybody is different. Even you see, the only sometimes you may think we are all the same is when you are not from that country. Like for instance, when we see Chinese people, we see them as all the same. Is a Chinese man that all Chinese faces are the same. It's like, like black people. That's why Ghanaians have been able to travel with and somebody else's passport. You just show it. You see that it is me. It is me. Yeah? Of course, you are and there is a boy. Yeah. Of course, you are is a boy. <laughs> You get it. Now, human beings have realized that everybody is fearfully and wonderfully made. So that's why now they are using fingerprints, eyes, those parts you cannot easily mistake in it. All right? But everybody is special, unique. Amen. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought. God was skillfully creating you in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. 
So God saw you even when you were not formed. Even, even, even when you were a cloth. That is why abortion is a sin. Because God recognized even the unformed substance. When you are a cloth. When you are just like a little piece of meat. Many times when women bleed during their period, sometimes they are actually shedding children. Sometimes, yes. Especially some type of contraceptives. It makes them pregnant, but the baby does not settle. And in that form, it's just a few cells. You get it? That's the loop. So you find out that, you know, even when you are in that state, a blood, you are like just blood, part of the blood, or you are a cloth, or you are a bigger cloth, the unformed part is still recognized. God knew your unformed substance. Amen. And that is why when you do commit abortion, it affects you psychologically also. Are you listening to me? And in your book were written all the days that were ordained for me is written in your book when as yet there was not one of them. Notice the 16. Eh? Your eyes have seen my unformed substance and in your book were, ri- were all written the days that were ordained for me. God has a book. In that book are written the number of days that are ordained for you. <laughs> How many would like to see that book of God? Oh God, show me your book. And then God opens the book like that. And shows you. And and what do you see? 35. He opens and what do you see? 22. He opens and what do you see? 78. Ah, there is a book. And that book has the number of days that are ordained for you. I mean, when you were unformed, God knew you and has a book in which he has written the number of... And that is why perhaps the best way to see that there is a book which you cannot ignore or bypass, which has the days, is in the death sometimes of some of these celebrities. Because an example of Michael Jackson, who, I mean... Or even Princess Diana. She died in Paris. Just in the best place you could be. There's no better medical care you can have than if you're in Paris. Here, here in in, in Ghana, all the the time that I was in Ghana, I never saw anybody being resuscitated. Ever. Never. Yes. And... Um, but, but he had employed a doctor. And not just an ordinary doctor, but a cardiologist. I'm talking about Michael Jackson now. Who had now moved into the house. He had moved from his house in Dallas or wherever. And has moved to come and live in the house with Michael Jackson. Do you understand? I mean, somebody whose specialization is in the heart. Working. It's all the place. You can't even see eyes. Ear problem, nose, teeth, stomach, diarrhea, all those. His specialty is just the heart. And the heart stopped for him to see whether he could do something. Hey! But you see, there is a book in which all your days are written. And no matter what you do, you cannot have more days than the days that are written. Unless you can ask God to rewrite what he has written. And they resuscitated him and they tried to bring him back in the house. And even when the people came there, they said he, they tried to declare him dead. But the cardiologist insisted that they should take him. You see, and try. Because people have been known to stop breathing for five minutes, even sometimes seven minutes, and even sometimes longer. And they are brought back. So it's like try other method. And I am sure right there in the house, he has certain injections and other things to bring the person back. You see, but you see, 
it, 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 what I'm trying to say is that you see the strength of the human effort cannot do that. So what I'm trying to say also is a bit comforting for those of us who are full of fear. How many sometimes fear that you may die? Ra- ra- raise just only your right hand. You don't even have to raise your left as well. But it sometimes occurs to you that, hey, could it be that I am going to go? Huh? It has not occurred to you before. How many has it occurred to you before? Just about 17 of you. And the rest of you. The Lord will not heal your fears. Your fears will multiply because you could not raise your hand. Hmm. Hey! But you see, when you are settled in your heart, and you know that God has such intricate knowledge of you and everything about you, it should make you rest knowing that I cannot get cancer, I cannot die in an accident, I can, my heart cannot stop beating, I cannot just expire out of this world unless it is in the book and I've reached that particular date. I cannot go out of this world. I, I remember when my father was in the hospital. When he left Ghana, he left in a wheelchair in England. To England. And he was in a hospital. He had a very serious condition that she should have died. And he told me, he said, everybody around me died. This one died. This one died. This one died. And I was still there. Hey, until he was discharged. Even I was surprised that he was discharged. And I was surprised when he came. But the condition, you know, that I know that it is, it, it makes you die suddenly. You know, but he didn't die. He, he became well and came to campaign politics. I remember a certain brother. He was. Brother, are your eyes painting you? Are your eyes painting you? You are in the spirit. <laughs> If somebody has got up tracks, we give him up tracks. Listen, I remember a certain brother. He became very sick. And then the doctors wrote on his folder. Normally they write, I think, with a blue pen. But then they took a red pen. Hey! And then they wrote something on the folder. Something, something, emergency agent. Emergency agent. Agent, emergency. <laughs> emergency agent so they took him in England and he thought he would die but he didn't die one day I met him still he hadn't died (laughs) then he started to tell me the people who came to visit him in the hospital who have died that he was in the hospital that people thought he was going to die then they came to visit him that he was going to die or that he was very that they have died and he's still around. Because when you open the book, you will see a different number for everybody. A different number of years for everybody. Like your years are different from my years. And no one really knows the number of years that have been given to you. So you think that this person is going to die, but he's not going to die. One day, a certain elderly man. He was driving in his car and he reached a traffic light. And there was a certain beggar who used to stand there. I don't know whether he was fully normal or it was a beggar or whether. Anyway, he was standing by the traffic light. So when he saw the old man driving his car, he said, Ha! Ah, I thought you had died a long time ago. He said, Oh! I thought you had died. Are you still around? And the old man was annoyed. Say, what do you mean? What you see, you thought I've died long time ago. But you see, once you have not reached that particular number, you will be in the system uh, 
All the dangerous things will not kill you. Yes. In the name of Jesus, receive life from the Lord. Hey! How precious also, verse 17, are your thoughts to be, O God. How vast is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would outnumber the sun. When I am awake, I am still with you. Amen. How precious also are your thoughts to me. God has precious thoughts for you. He has a call on your life. He made you specially for something. If you go into a place and you see something specially made with wires coming out of it, you will ask, what is it for? What is it for? Is that not your question? You see some gadget going something like, what is this for? What is it for? Why? Because of how it's been made. What is it for? So what do you do with this? What do you do with this? And what do you do with this? You see, how you are determines your calling. Yes. How you are and what you are like determines what you are called to do. I mean, you can just look at an object and know this is square. So it goes, it's called for a square hole. Yeah. This is round, so it's called to a round hole. This is like this, so it's called for that. Many people are always asking, so what, what does God want me to do? What does God want you, you, What God wants you to do is depend on how you are made. When you are made with choleric, you are for leadership. When you are made with phlegmatic, sometimes you are for leadership, sometimes you are for flowing along. When you are made with sanguine, there are some things that you are supposed to, your disorganization and your confusion is part of your calling. Hey! It's true. Because there are, there are some things you, you cannot be strict. When you are made with super melancholism, many times your job is not pastoral. Melancholic behavior cannot pastor a big church. When you are very strict, people cannot stay for long. God, people are really some well. And to be a pastor, everybody has to manifest around you for a long time till they straighten out. Yes. So when you are a good pastor, sometimes people will think that you close your eyes to sin. It's true. Super melancholic, at least the examples I've seen, their churches don't grow. Yeah. Super <laughs> melancholic, melancholic. Like, Charlie, if you do this, let this be your last time. From today, this and that. All who this, this and that. From now, step to the right. Cut off. That's the end. This and that. Uh-huh. It doesn't work. Yes. So, brothers and sisters, how you are. Oh, that's it. All that you have to look and see, how is the thing? When you look at this, you can say, oh, this is for sound. When you look at the one on top, you say, this is for, must be for light. So that's how investigations are done. What was the person trying? The way it's sharp is for killing. Yes. Depending on your calling. And sometimes that can even tell you the kind of person you shouldn't marry. Some of you choleric girls. With your sharp tongue and fast decisions. If you go and marry an equally sharp tongue, fast decisions, brother, you may not stay for long. You yourself should see that you need a flowing brother who doesn't mind so many things. He can accommodate your attitude. If you are a wild choleric brother, you must be able to see that you need a cool Sister, whose philosophy for life is how for do? <laughs> Charlie, we for flow. How for do? Charlie, that's how we be. How for do? Charlie, make we go. Charlie, how for do? He say, he say he they leave the church. How for do? Charlie, we for follow him. He say he go start church. How for do? Charlie, I for follow him. The guy is crazy, but how for do? I for follow him. <laughs> the philosophy of life is how for do? How for do? Ah! 
So I'm, all, all I'm saying is that let us stop crying about what God has called us to do. Right? Am I covered? Look at the technical wires and cables and things that are coming out, and then you can see the kind of calling that there is for you. I'm telling you. And when you see it, you do it. Now, if you are God has made you as a, a pan, you see, one day I went to a certain house and I wanted to boil some water. But there was no kettle. Now, I saw a frying pan. Now, when I take the frying pan, I put it there. And I said, I'm coming to boil water in the frying pan like that. Do you think I'm wise? How long will it take for that water to boil? And even how the water will be. Not even the oil, assume that it's even clean, wide open like that. Yeah. It's not suitable. You can see that it's not meant for this. So sometimes that's why we say, look, sometimes you go where it will work. According to how you are built. So most of us, we should stop being proud. I want to be like this. I want to be that. Be what you've been woven. I said you've been woven. May you find your calling in the name of Jesus. And finally, I was telling you, in verse 19, he says, Oh, that you will slay the wicked. You see, he prays for people to die from his hands. Depart from me, there, men of bloodshed, for they speak against you wickedly, and your enemies take your name in vain. Do not, I hate those who hate you, O Lord. So he had hatred. But who did he hate? He hated people who hated the Lord. Do I not hate those who hate you? Amen? Do I not love those who rise up against you? I hate them with utmost hatred. And they have become my enemies. You must become enemies of those enemies of God. You cannot be in love with enemies of God. Amen. And then finally, he's confused again. The last prayer is confusion. Sex me, O God. And know my heart. Even though he has originally said, you have searched me and you have known my heart. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. Hey. And see if there be any hateful or wicked way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. Amen. Amen. When you come to God, look, the heart it's like some of our rooms. When we are even looking for something, you cannot find it. The way the place is. There are so many things there. How many have been tidying up things and then you say, Ha! Ah, look at something. I didn't know that I had it. That is how your heart is. It's like a big treasure box. That is why it has to be searched. If it was obvious, you even could know it. You could even know it. You would just see it straight away. It's obvious. But many things that are in our hearts are not obvious. That is why we dare not be confident. We can't be confident. I can't be confident. I can't be confident. I can't be confident about my life. And about my soul. And about who, are, who, are, who am I? I can't even know what is in my heart. Why am I a pastor? What am I doing? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Well, what are the reasons for the things that I'm doing? I can't, I can't be sure. So I will join the psalmist. Honestly, to pray this last prayer of confusion. That search me, O Lord, if I myself I can't see. And try me, Lord, and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting life. Charlie, those of you who are so confident, you say, as for me, I know myself. I am not this. I know myself. I am this, this, this. Charlie, oh, oh, you are making a mistake already. You see, in my, in my father's house, there is nobody who is like this or that. I am this or that. Look, pray. Rather pray. And rather pray, Lord, search me. Sometimes you see people answering questions with such confidence. I never this. I am this. I am this. I am that. I never. You can see clearly. They, they are overconfident. But the man who wrote this psalm, who knows so much about God, is not confident. And you, you are confident. May God help you to set your heart and may you find him in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet, everybody. I sought him 
and I found him. Lift your hand. Thank God this evening for his word to your life. Candos Pelerigos. Shandel Berimolande Beleve Sembara la Mana Makabala. Paralumo Simbe Kebre de Shembalanda Maladom Sedelikeda. Prolisen Alberi Colombre. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. I'm a Kamalon de Bolohom Shondale Mene. Oh, yes. Yes. I sought him, Lord. I sought him. And I found him. Who my soul loves. Now I found him. I will hold him. I'll never let him go. Of your love, come on now, is stronger than the spice, stronger than the spice. I saw him, I saw him. him. Come on, sing it. Now, now I found him, whom my soul loves. Who your hands father thank you what a great god you are you know our unformed substance you know our days you bless us lord you created us specially crafted us day by day and lord you are with us in the deep deepest corners of the earth in the darkness and in the light in hell and in heaven wherever we may be found you may also be found there where we can pray we can call on you 
in any situation. We can serve you, Lord, whether there are people there or not, because you are there with us. In prison, you are there with us. In heaven, you are there with us. In America, you are there with us. On the aeroplane, you are there. In the toilet, you are there. In the bathroom, you are there. You are everywhere. We thank you for your blessing. Lord, search us tonight. Search us, Lord, tonight. Search us, Lord, and know our hearts. Try us, Lord, and know our thoughts. If there is any wicked thing in us, clean us, O Lord, and lead us in the way of everlasting life. Come on. Sing it, brothers. Oh, my soul. For your word tonight in the name of Jesus. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here tonight, you are not a born again Christian. Maybe somebody invited you to church, but you want to give your life to God, to Jesus Christ. Then I want to just pray a final prayer with especially with you before I take my seat. If you are here today, you want to say, Pastor, help me to know Jesus. I don't want to go to hell, I want to go to heaven. I want Jesus to come into my heart and save me and make me a new person. If you are here like that tonight, just lift only your right hand up high and I'm going to pray with you as we close. Lift it up high. God bless you. Just your right hand. Thank you. Thank you. Lift it up high. God bless you. Above your head so I can see. If you have lifted your hand, I want you to come to me in the front here. Just come. Come from wherever you are standing. Come, 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 come. God is going to touch your life. God is going to change your life. Your life will never be the same. I sought him. Come on. I sought him. Now I, I found, found him. Who my soul loves. Now I found him. Oh, I'm going to hold him. I will hold him. I never let him go. For your great blessing in our lives tonight in Jesus name and everyone said amen. amen God bless you you may be seated in the presence of the Lord